Quantum physics is weird, and one of its strangest things is entanglement, which says that something I do in one place can instantly cause something to happen on the other side of the universe. This was only theoretical when first proposed around 1930. Instantaneous communication means faster than the speed of light, directly contradicting special relativity. Einstein called it spooky and didn't believe it. But in 1970, experiments proved it to actually be true in reality. The experiments require special circumstances. We can't just point our magic quantum wand at anything in the universe and command it. We first have to send something that we can command. That thing doesn't know what our command will be, and it doesn't have anything like a radio control link. It is a single electron or photon created in a special way that produces nearly identical twins. These two entangled siblings are sent in different directions. No matter how far apart they get, they retain an almost telepathic ability to instantly influence each other. Electrons have a property called spin, which produces a magnetic field. The spin can either be up or down. This is often illustrated by a rotating ball, where the field points one way if the ball rotates clockwise, and the opposite way if the ball rotates counterclockwise. This is not a portrait of a real electron, but an analogy of its behavior. Measuring an electron's spin direction about any chosen axis reveals that it is always exactly up or down, never anything in between, as we would expect if reality were anything like the analogy. Either the electron is always definitely spinning about all axes, or its spin is indefinite until we examine it, which somehow forces it to become definite about the axis we have chosen. The two explanations are equally crazy, but they are all that science offers, and there is no choosing between them, considering a single electron. If we could examine an electron's spin around multiple axes simultaneously, we might be able to figure out what's going on, but Heisenberg's uncertainty principle teaches that we can't do this. Interestingly, making the situation more complicated provides the means to choose which explanation is right. Entangled electrons always have opposite spins about any chosen axis. Based on simple probability, if the spin around three different axes chosen randomly for each electron of many pairs is recorded, a subsequent tally will show more than 50% matches if the electrons have definite spin at all times, and exactly 50% if they don't have definite spin until observed. Many variations of this basic test have proven that spin is indefinite until observed. They also prove that observing the spin of one electron instantly causes the spin of both electrons to become definite. The entangled electrons appear to communicate with each other at faster than light speeds. Until observed, the indeterminate spin of an electron is a probability wave. What, you might ask, are probability waves? We really don't know, but they are real. They are the only explanation for the real interference patterns produced by individual electrons. Such patterns are produced only by waves, in this case of the electron's position probability. Although we don't have such compelling evidence for other characteristics, such as spin, quantum mechanics argues that every characteristic exists as a probability wave until observed, at which point the wave collapses. This is profoundly weird in two respects. Communication faster than the speed of light contradicts special relativity, which has otherwise been proven absolutely correct. And probability wave collapse is a sugar-coated description of magically disappearing from the universe, something that nothing else does, including all other types of waves. Different types of waves are composed of very different things. Mechanical waves of force and velocity, electric of voltage and current, light of electric and magnetic fields, but they all behave similarly. As we might expect, waves travel faster if unimpeded, that is, in a region of low impedance, while they travel slower in a region of high impedance. If a wave traveling through low impedance runs into a wall of high impedance, a portion of it continues on at a slower speed, but some of it is also reflected backward. This reflected wave is a mirror image of the incident wave. It is an exact mirror image if the impedance is infinite. If you could add this and the incident wave together, they would cancel each other, and there would be no wave at all. You might call this a collapsed wave. 
but you can't do this because the reflected and incident waves don't exist at the same time. Before an electron is forced to have a definite spin, its probability wave is unimpeded. At the instant of detecting the spin, probability impedance becomes infinite. Any other kind of wave would be reflected as a mirror image. This can't happen with the probability wave because it is bound to the electron, which continues moving forward. Unless the reflection is not just in space, but also in time. The reflected probability wave travels backward in time, canceling the incident wave at each point until it reaches the moment of creation of the entangled pair. In a way, the argument that the other electron's definite spin was determined at the moment of creation is right, but entanglement is also right. Spooky action at a distance, that a probability wave can suddenly vanish from the universe, and that entanglement contradicts relativity are all wrong.